Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining us again this week. Once again, this is Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief. And this is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga. And we will be joined shortly by You Go Strange, but we are here once again to bring you all a live recording of OAW Late Night right here on Otaku Simbo. Weekly, as always, here to bring you all the latest. Once again, another live recording of OAW Late Night. Later on in this live stream, we will also be doing our live recordings of Discussion of the Week and Advice Corner. But first and foremost, let's kick things off with OAW Late Night. And what we're, what we're going to do tonight, what I decided to do was we had a lot of questions that had yet to be answered from last week's Q&A session. So for the next 30 minutes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do another one. Q&A round two. This is round two, two times. We're doing this. <laughs> so please, everyone, everyone watching, please feel free at this moment, leave your questions for me, for Hikari, for Hugo. Once he jumps back in, please leave those right now. We will be scouring the comments looking for our questions and we'll we'll see what we can do we'll do our level best so feel free and leave those now so hikari do you see one yet uh, let's see have you heard okay i got one i got one so this first one have you heard of jojo's bizarre adventure of course i have uh and, I, and hikari i know you have too right yeah yeah, no, I got, I like, I've I've been on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Well, the first time I found out about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was when um, I read the preview for it in uh, American Shonen Jump. But that was, like, way back in, like, oh six or so. Wow. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. And um, and it was, like, three chapters. It was of, um, who's the grandson? I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, boy, I don't even know. Yeah, uh, uh, is it Janoske? I think. I thought it was Jo. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. I don't know. It 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 it, it was like the the second JoJo. Because, I haven't read the series, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Have you have you seen the anime? I think I did watch maybe the first episode of the anime when it came out, but I actually forgot that there was an anime, so I don't actually have to read that thing. Well, see, the thing is, they remade it though, because there's a new, there's a new JoJo Bizarre Adventure. I th so, oh, it's not faithful to the manga. I thought it was, I thought it was faithful to the manga. No, this one, I, I think, I think this one is like the, uh, like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where it's a more faithful adaptation than the original. I believe, okay. I believe that's right. Because here's the thing, because JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is an old series. Like, I think the manga came out in the '90s. Well, I didn't realize it was that old. I think it is. I could be wrong. I could be wrong because, like I say, I've only read like I've only read like those three chapters, um, so I could be wrong. But it it's pretty old. Mm. It's much older than the anime. Let me put it to you like that. It's much older than the anime. All yeah, right. So so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Going back to the comments. <laughs> Here's one. Why, why, why do people think the Earth is flat? Because they haven't attended physics, apparently. No, no, no. But did you hear? Uh, apparently, Kyrie Irving was on um, some sort of live stream or Skype call or something with, with some of his teammates and I think somebody else. And he was talking about how uh, the Earth is, is really flat um, and that it's a it's a conspiracy apparently by by NASA that people never went in. <laughs> that people never went to space that the whole Neil Armstrong thing is a conspiracy uh, so I guess uh, people are are really taken aback by the fact that uh, someone who's highly respected and highly regarded in a particular area is now at least in some sense, shown himself to be a fool. And you said that's uh, Kyrie uh, Irving? Yeah, he plays for the uh, yeah, I, I, I know, I know, I know who Kyrie is, uh, and yeah. that's why he's a basketball player. Well, I mean, even even uh, another basketball player came out, Draymond Green. Uh, and who that's why they're basketball players. Uh, 
That's why they're not physicists. So yeah. moving on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Infinity War versus Justice League, which will be the better movie, which will make more money? What do you want to see? Um, I think, Infin- I mean, that, that I think is a little bit more obvious. I think Infinity War. Um, yeah, t- the, the answer to all three of those questions is Infinity War. I mean, yeah. if it, I mean, con- consider this, dude. The one of the main reasons why the first Avengers movie was as successful as it was was because that was the payoff for the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase One experiment. You know, because when before that movie came out, everybody was still trying to find out if this. Uh, you know, if this shared universe thing was actually going to work. So Avengers 1 was sort of like the payoff for that. Like, hey, look, it actually worked. And here's the the, the product. Right. Well, Infinity War is going to be the final payoff because that's what we've been building up to since the first Avengers. Actually, since Captain America, the first Avenger is the you know Infinity Stones and the Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos. Like we've been leading up building up for that for what the last four and a half years since may of 2012 so um yeah that there i think i think the thing is you gotta keep this in mind people already have so much invested in infinity war because they've been following it since you know iron man one in a way or avengers one in 2012 so that's just the final payoff Justice League, on the other hand, is still an experiment that hasn't bore any fruit yet, you know? Right. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, I mean, yeah, like, because look, the first one comes out um, in November. So we'll already know right then and there. You know what I mean? We, right. We'll already. And, 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 and like I said, the DC films are hanging on by a thread already. They do. They can't even get a they can't even keep a director for Batman. Right. And that's their top, that's their highest selling franchise, Batman. And they can't even keep a director for it. Yeah. What I think is, is, I don't know if interesting is the right word, but at least intriguing is the fact that DC seems to be doing the reverse of Marvel. Marvel Mm -hmm. built up the payoff in Avengers 1, very painstakingly, in fact. I mean, the whole experiment was... I mean, looking back, it seems rather. I, I, I don't. Looking back, it seems inevitable that we would get to this point with respect to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and yet people forget that when Iron Man one first came out, he was like a B list character. Uh, not many. Mm-hmm. I mean, he never had. He never really had a movie before. I don't think. Um, and if he did, it was some low budget crap film. Um, no, no, Iron Man so, never had a movie. Right. So the only the only the only, the only movie the only movie Iron Man ever had was the Invincible Iron Man animated direct to video uh, film. Right. So he he didn't have much name recognition. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't at all clear that you could use superheroes as a basis to build um, any sort of cinematic universe. Um, of course, the the Batman had done it before, but that was an A-list character in a very highly valuable property, whereas Iron Man wasn't. Mm -hmm. So looking back, we might think that it was inevitable when in reality it wasn't inevitable at all. And I think what's happening with DC is that they see what Marvel has done and they think that it's inevitable, whereas it's clearly not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they, they pretty much think that, oh, it's a a given that... uh, Right. Given that there'll be eight, that their movies will succeed just like Marvel's, but it, right, yeah. and, and this is evidenced by the fact that all their movies have basically been killed by the critics, mm-hmm. um, except for Man is Still, which again I liked. Uh, but after that, everything's been been horrible. They can't keep directors for the films. Um, they don't. They, they, don't they don't even. They don't. They don't even keep directors. Uh, per franchise, because um, they're t- like right now. I saw the article uh, the other day. Right now, they're in talks with Mel Gibson for doing Suicide Squad too. Right, what happened? Yeah. So they can't, where's, they can't, where's right. David Ayer? Right, and 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 that's a that's a real problem when you can't keep continuity of um, intellect. 
I mean, because there's something to be said for keeping brain power in a certain sort of continuity. You want the people who make these films to continue to make those films. And every time you get somebody different to make the film, you have to contend with the fact that it might be somebody else's vision. And that vision may be different from another person's vision. I mean, so yep. they can't even seem to keep their, their continuity of brain power, which is very important for uh, anything of this magnitude. Um, and also, they seem to be going the reverse of Marvel because they, they think that they can put out Justice League first and then do the individual films after that, which is odd. I, I'm not sure who thought of that or why they thought they could do that, but that just seems well, ridiculous. It, 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 well, it wouldn't have mattered because here's the thing. If anybody was going to put out the group film first and then do the solo movies, DC would have been able to pull that off. Why? Because everybody already knows who Superman is. Everyone already knows who Batman is. Everyone already knows who Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash. Like Their characters are more famous. They need no introduction. Just put those suckers in a movie together and do, because keep this in mind, I'll, I'll keep going back to this because it's the perfect example of how can you do it with the group vid first and then branch out into the individual ones, the Justice League animated series. The first three episodes of the Justice League animated series is all about the Justice League coming together. And then after the third episode is when we start getting the individual stories. Right, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm just, I'm still not really convinced that it can be done simply because I don't I don't see how you can have a vision for an entire cinematic universe, how that vision can include multiple characters, mm -hmm. some of which have previous incarnations, and then keep the vision for each individual character pretty much in continuity with all the other characters mm -hmm. and have that in continuity with the vision for the universe itself. I mean, if I was if I was writing it, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm. Well, they 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 just that need just seems too big. With, dude, they're they're lacking somebody at the head who has the know how. That's that's the thing. But anyhow, anyway, let's move. Let's uh go ahead and move on. Uh, what is your opinion of this anime season? I'm not watching any uh, brand new anime right now. Like I'm I'm yeah, still on Hunter Hunter. So I, I have no opinion of the season. Um, who your favorite? What's your favorite anime opening? Oh, that's funny. My, my, what is it? The Lonely Kitchen one? No, mind you, Yu Hakusho. Smile Bomb, man. Oh, you okay? I knew I knew it was either Lonely Kitchen or Yu Yu Hakusho. I, I, I do. I love Smile Bomb. That's that's like one of my. That's yeah. Let's see my my favorite. Anime opening. Uh, hold on a second. I'll open up my YouTube music list. I, I mean, uh, like, for me, Yu Yu Hakusho's opening, the fourth Naruto opening, the first Shippuden opening, um, and I, I, don't, I don't know which opening uh, sign is uh, by Flo. I don't know which opening for Shippuden that is, but that opening. Um, See. Yeah, I got a couple. Ones I, ones I really like, uh, Kano no Tabi, Beautiful World. That's a great one. I really like that one. Um, Free Bird, Haibane Hi Renme. I like that opening. Mm -hmm. Uh see other ones oh kikaider i like that opening too which one kikaider oh yeah 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 it wreck seven days like that one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it i think cool all right, let me see. Uh, oh, look like you goes back in. Yo. Hey, what's up? All right, so anyway, you were saying. Why you keep stealing that internet, man? <laughs> Dude, it, it's my neighbors who left it unlocked, bro. They left it unlocked. I'm just doing what I'm doing, man. Okay, so uh, you go. You can, you can go ahead and you can tell in. You can go ahead and you can tell in this question. Uh, what's your favorite anime opening? 
Oh, I already know. Uh, Death Note, the world. That's like my favorite one. Is that the first one or the second one? The first oh, that's, one. That's the first one, yeah, because Hello People. The second one I didn't care for. It's Hello. Yeah, that's the second one. I, I, yeah. I, I like Hello People, though. Hello People! Oh, no, I'm well, sorry. What, good, up, but what up, people? The first one is great. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Oh, God. Here's, here's one. Uh, do you think black Americans should receive some type of reparation? I think we should, but we'll never get it. <laughs> dude, and it's, dude, it's so funny I see that question because I was rewatching uh, the first barbershop the other night when Homeboy was talking about it's like, yeah, man, black people supposed to be getting some type of money. Talk about we supposed to be getting reparations. It's like re reparations for what? <laughs> yeah, no, I think we should, but we won't. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends. For me, I guess it depends on what you mean by reparations. Um, I just don't think there's there's there really is no systematic way to counteract uh, the divestment of wealth in the black community that was perpetrated by slavery and then after that Jim Crow. I mean, the effects mm -hmm. are just, there's, there's, there's just too large in scope and scale. So that that's never going to happen. Um, at least if you think reparations would do that, I very seriously doubt that. Yeah, no, you um, won't. Because, uh, because uh, especially, thing is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, especially when you consider the fact that um, America right now is more segregated than it ever was. Mm -hmm. Um, and since African Americans are disproportionately poor, um, that means that they live in poor neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and. It's just too many people, too much concentrated poverty. I mean, even the, the, the United States government now is spending trillions and trillions of dollars fighting this so-called war on poverty. It doesn't work. Um, but what I will say is it depends on what type of reparations you're talking about. So for me, I think reparations would be uh, black people should be able to go to college for free. Yep. I was if just, I was just about to say that. If you want to get an advanced degree, you should be able to get an advanced degree for free. Or, or, some, type, or some type of scholarship or something. I mean, going to college for free is, I think, uh, a pretty great scholarship. Yeah. So. I feel you. You go. You want to chime in on that one? Uh, no. <laughs> no, you can't say no. This is a Q and A. No, that yeah, was the can. answer. No. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see what you're doing. Uh, I, I see what he got. Okay, uh, so we got we got um, my man Mitchell got a question for yeah. Hikari. He says Hikari enjoyed your Mobile Suit Gundam video review. Will you do reviews of other Gundam series like Wing, Iron Blood Orphans, Turn A, etc.? Nope. Nope. I mean, yeah. I mean, cause aren't cause aren't like uh, Turn A and Iron Blood Orphans aren't those like newer series? No, Turn A is not a newer series. Iron Blooded Orphans, I believe, is a newer series. Uh, the thing about Gundam is that it's just too big. It's mm, too yeah, big it's, it's too big. I mean, it's big. Universal Century timeline includes like the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Then it includes uh, many series like War in the Pocket, then Eighth MS Team, and then Stardust Memory. Then it includes like Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta Gundam, Shards Counterattack. I'm like, like no. One one review of the original Mobile Suit Gundam is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, man. That's that's like uh, well, well, no, actually, I think uh, you go, Dean. You try to review like all the Power Ranger series at one point. No, I'm just reviewing like some of them. Link Carr is the one who's reviewing every Power Ranger series. I'm just reviewing the ones that I haven't seen before. So I did RPM. Uh, Mystic Force, Jungle Fury. Jungle Fury was the bomb. Operation Overdrive, which sucked. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm doing that here and there. I ain't nah, nah, no, no thanks. Yeah. But I did do Sentai though. So <clears throat> reviewing, try, trying to review all the Gundams would be like trying to review all the Power Rangers. There's yeah, there's a bunch of them. Uh, let's see. Are you up to date with the Viking series still? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, I I know I haven't. I fell off reviewing for the second half of this previous season, but I, but I did watch it. Um, they killed my man, Ragnar. 
What yeah. season is it on? Four? Yeah, it, season four just ended. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, never, so. I never got into Vikings. I think I watched the first couple of episodes and I don't know, it just didn't appeal to me. Yeah. I I, mean, I'm at the point right now where. Now, I was just going to say, I'm at the point right now in general where finding new things to read and watch is becoming more and more difficult. Because um, I just don't have that passion that I used to have for an excitement for new series. Now everything has to be like quality controlled. And I have to be like <laughs> absolutely sure this is going to be great before I start watching it or reading it. Uh, I can relate see. to that. Um, oh, so one one of one of my viewers did say the manga for JoJo came out in 1987, so it's actually even older than I thought it would be. Um, let's see. Do you think that Death Note can work in a small scale setting? Well, how small are you talking? Because the bulk of the series takes place in Japan. All of the series takes place in Japan. Now that I think about, I it. I think he's talking about scale in terms of time limit. Not necessarily like yeah, limit. yeah. It did the movie. The movie he's talking about it did. The, there was a the, there was a live action Japanese movie. Yeah, the live action Japanese movies is like what a year, less than a year, that that story takes place. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's really small. Um, let's see, which character in anime or cartoons you feel like is too underrated? Underrated character in anime or cartoons. Hmm. I gotta think on that. Underrated character, anime there, I mean, cartoons. There, there are several, but uh, there's hundreds probably. Oh, okay, mm. so one character I would say is probably extremely um, underrated is probably Shara Asnabol and Gundam. Underrated Shar, really? Oh yeah. Underrated? I, yeah, I'd never hear anybody. Uh, well, it depends on where, which where you're talking about. Like, if I said Shar, like if we were in Japan and I said Shar Aznable's underrated, you could say I'm crazy. But like in America, I think Shar Aznable is is extremely underrated. Like, I never hear him on any top character list, any top like villain or antagonist okay. list. Okay, like, that's much fair. Much. That's fair in America. But like you have to understand that that series of Gundam hadn't aired in America before. And if it did, it was like obscure as hell. Right. You know? yeah. But like you go to Japan and Shar Aznable is like Darth Vader over there. Like yeah, so many much, of the yeah. Gundam villains basically come from Shar, like Zex Marquis, all of those cats, Shar, Shar clones, all of them. So uh Another is underrated. Wow. Like underrated in America, yeah, but wow. I mean, I'm, wow. I'm, I, I don't even know how to answer that question. I mean, underrated to whom? Who are we talking about? Because uh, the thing is, is like, I can, I mean, granted, I am thinking more of like comic book characters, though, to be honest, but like, Dr. Fate isn't a household name, but he's not underrated in the comic book community. Um, she Hulk, right. same thing. I mean, She Hulk has only been in what one, what two animated series, I think. Um, technically, she's. I mean, would she be considered underrated because she's not amongst Marvel fans? Um, so underrated. I how? I guess. I guess underrated in general. Like who? Like who would be considered underrated to? Um, within the biggest context possible. I got it. I got it. Because I've, I've, I've actually thought about this. If I ever became a writer for Marvel, I got it. One of the most underrated characters, I think, who you can do a lot with, which they haven't done, Jubilee. Yeah. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not so... And the reason, and the reason why I'm not sold is because other writers have used Jubilee as the focal point for stories recently. Like her, her popularity. Not really. Is... They, not really. Like right now, I haven't kept up on what they're doing after after they did uh, Decimation. So I remember she was a vampire at one point, which was stupid. Mm -hmm. But I feel like yeah, that was a while back. Though. Yeah. So I haven't kept up on what they're doing, but I feel like there is a really awesome Jubilee story. 
that hasn't been told yet. And I feel like everybody kind of writes her off as like, oh, she shoots fireworks. It's like, no, there's a lot more to her than just that. I like her background as an orphan, Chinese immigrant. I like all of that. So I really think there could be a lot more done with Jubilee that they're just not tapping into because no one wants to because they know, oh, a Jubilee issue will never sell, blah, blah, blah. But she has a great connection with Wolverine. You know, she's an interesting character if they let her be an interesting character. Well, in, that Jubilee. in, in, in a similar vein, a uh, character you, could, you probably could say is underrated is Static Shock. He's just been getting shafted for years. Yeah, but he's about to get his own TV show. So what a, a live action TV show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Static Shock? Yeah. They're they're wow. they're in they're in negotiations to bring that to the CW, the Arrowverse. Um so Oh no, not on the CW, that's whack. If negotiate dude, not only that, get this. Apparently, um they're trying to negotiate with Tyler Perry to do it. So uh I don't I, I, don't I know, know I about that. that that's a choice Tyler I wouldn't have Perry? That's a choice I wouldn't have picked, but we've never seen him what? handle a property like this. So who knows? But like I said, it's still it's still part of the rumor mill because negotiations haven't been finalized on anything. So that is disgusting. <laughs> how, do you give, how do you give static shock to Tyler fucking Perry? Has he ever d directed anything besides those blackbuster movies? Mm. Why do we think this thing has any talent at all? I will say he was uh, decent. He was a decent actor in Gone Girl, but that's about it. But I mean, as a writer, he's trash. Is he writing it or directing it? It he's doesn't matter. Be, he's supposed to be the showrunner for it, but oh once again. God, that's insane. No. Oh. If you think the moralizing in Luke Cage was bad, wait till you wait till Tyler Perry gets his fucking hands on Static Shock. All right, let's see, man. He's gonna, it's he's still he's gonna make that look like a, a pastor, dude. There's oh man, there's so many, so many questions and so little time. So let's do uh like for the next uh, five minutes. Let's see if we can get through some. Uh, I saw one. Let me see. Oh, this is. Oh man, maybe I should. Mm, part of me wants to actually do that for a top five. Now that they, now that they mention that, I might do. Yeah, I might do a top five. We might, we might do a top five on that. Uh, top five uh, favorite directors. My That'd list be would be have zero names on it. I don't, I don't really pay attention. Oh, to you don't follow anything. directors? Nope. Mm. Real, real quick, Uber. Can you think of your like top five favorite directors? To me. Mm -hmm. Like you want it now, or I yeah, you yeah. Can, you, can, can you think of it? Like, I mean, if we, yeah, have, yeah, yeah. If okay, okay. How about this? How about this? We 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 save that one for later, and 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 we'll we'll do that at another time. Because because I can I can think of five easy. I can yeah, think of five. I can easy. do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me see another one. Do, 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 do. I don't watch Better Call Saul. Um. What, what, the, what did I tell you? So I just looked. I just looked this shit up. What's up? I just looked this up. This Tyler Perry. Apparently, it's not Static Shock. It's uh, Black Lightning. Oh, okay, Black Lightning. Oh, wait, is oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, never mind then. And, and here, and here, and here. Here's the the hook. Rumor has it that Perry has written for Jeff, Jefferson Pierce, also known as DC Comics Black Lightning. As a reverend and community leader who has retired from the superhero lifestyle, mm -hmm. did I not just call him? Did I not just say he was going to make that nigga a pastor? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, let me if, see. If memory serves correctly, Jeffrey Pierce was a science teacher in DC Comics, but I'll have to do yeah. some check on that. I'm almost certain he was. Uh, I'm trying to look for another one. Ooh, somebody mentioned the Outlaw Star opening. Yeah, that's another one of my favorites. I love Through the Night. Oh, that's my jam. Um, oh, yeah, that one was pretty good. Not one of my favorites, but I like it. And there's a lot of questions that are, like, you just can't, you just, you just can't answer in five minutes. Oh, here's one. Favorite like, like somebody, 
Oh, favorite Star Wars character? Ooh, yes. um, Vader. Vader, not Anakin. Vader. Uh, I like I like Vader and Anakin. I like them both. Probably. It's difficult for me to tell. I like them both equal. I, I look at I view them as basically one. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, and then, and, and, and then all of these, like all of these political questions, like you can't answer that in five minutes. Uh, Larry, why do they always end up killing your favorites in these TV shows? I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Um. Do, 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 do. Science teacher, yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody, Science somebody teacher. asked you about food wars. Oh, I mean, I've only seen like bits and pieces of it. I haven't actually watched the whole thing. Do, 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 do. Most underrated Naruto <clears throat> character. Oh Lord, there are plenty. <laughs> Where do you want to start? <laughs> so, most underrated Naruto character. Yeah. Where do you want to start? <laughs> Like all secondary characters? <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much the whole supporting cast. <laughs> uh, uh, dude, like, uh, um, oh man, what's your girl's name? The um, the um, examiner who was the one of uh, Rochimaru's former former apprentice, uh, apprentice, Anko, I think was her name. Yeah, yeah. She she's underrated. Uh Kuranai's underrated. Uh Tamari, personally, I think is underrated. Uh Conqueror too in that regard. Um Neji, Choji, Shikamaru. Yeah. Choji especially. Choji especially, I think. No, Shikamaru, Shikamaru, I think they did enough with, but Choji especially was underrated. I thought I, I, I Neji nah, Neji had his spotlight. Hinata, I thought was under well, she kinda that's kinda her thing. Um but yeah, like the vast majority. Any okay, if your name isn't Naruto, Sasuke, or Kakashi, you were you were underrated. Yeah. Long story short. All right. So yeah. So pretty much, um, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna wrap up the Q and A portion of this live stream. So I do want to thank everybody uh, for sharing their questions. Uh, I know we still got a ton of questions we didn't even get to, but you know, there's only so much you can do in 30 minutes.